Happy Sunday, y'all. This is Pixis Designs. I uh, wanted to go over uh, a couple of updates for you. Uh, when I originally released the uh, Serpentor stand, I was having issues with the uh, uh, Silk PLA. It's still not the best ever, but I've <laughs> the few pieces that I shipped out end up having to uh, pretty much redesign the uh, top portion here. Uh, I don't know why I have this one out. This is the piece right here that I'm talking about. Um, I thought I'd be, you know, smart and uh, splice this a slice, splice, slice a certain way to give it uh, better uh, mechanical abilities, and I end up actually screwing it up more uh, than what I was fixing it. Uh, so I ended up going with a, uh, a five wall thickness all the way around the perimeter uh, to be able to uh, make this stand just. Uh, that much better for uh, anything being put on it. So the issues with the Serpentor stand have been fixed. Sorry, the silk one. Never had an issue with the black one or the gray one. Just um, it's the silk one I was always having the issue with. Um, so there it is. Looking pretty good. Uh, I had a couple questions about releasing a shorter version. Uh, because this does not fit on a lot of shelves. Um, so, while you see all the pieces for the uh, uh, Destro the Spoiler here, uh, I actually started making a shorter one for uh, my white version of the Despoiler. And since this uses the same basic components as uh, the Serpentor one, I went ahead and uh, Print up in gold, copper, whatever color you want to call it. And so the same pieces can be used for it, so uh, the functionality will still be the same on it. And you can actually have a uh, printer just be a little bit uh, shorter, like so. And just to show you an idea on how the height is, here's a bat figure. Uh, so. Where the old stand, you can pretty much have a figure up underneath the stand, underneath the air chariot. Uh, he's more chest height for the six inch figures. So I understand that a lot of people are going to have uh, shelf limitations and they still want to have Serpentor up in the air. Uh, you don't get a lot of the space that you would from the other stand, but he's at least above the ranks uh, going this route. So there's, I'm going to be putting this option up on my Etsy channel. Etsy channel? Etsy store uh, for you to be able to purchase the uh, short stand uh, versus the uh, taller stand. So I just wanted to kind of get that out of the way uh, that I'm no longer having the issue with the uh, silk uh, stand for Serpentor. All right, so let me get this out of the way here and kind of go into what this video is about. which would be the final uh, assembly design models for the uh, despoiler. Let me get him out of the way. I finally got everything ironed out uh, to be able to uh, produce this with a uh, more consistent assembly pattern. Uh, I fixed, I don't, for those of you that watched my previous prototyping video, uh, especially with the silk PLA engine piece. Uh, I decided to go ahead and add uh, supports for these pieces here to make it one more solid piece so it doesn't break so easy. So this is a lot more solid. Uh, and in doing that, I had to design the, the whole rear piece here to be able to accept the engine. And you can't, couldn't even tell the difference between this and my prototype because all that stuff is hidden. So this will be able to be glued in a lot better uh, for final assembly, which is, you know, the whole idea is to make my life easier to assemble this for you all. Uh, but this also makes it structurally more sound whenever you guys receive the final product, that it's just not going to disintegrate in your hands whenever you get it there. So, yeah, uh, I did a lot uh, to try and get this thing uh, to where I wanted it to be. So here's a quick uh, assembly video for the Despoiler, Dust Rose Iron Grenadier version.
I'm going to go ahead and throw this one up because this one is already on my Etsy store. The white version. And I don't know, man. I, I kind of prefer the white version a lot better than the black version. But I know the black version is where it's really at. Uh, this just screams like Cobra Claw. Uh, something that the, you know any, any of the troopers would be uh, driving around to you know, flank possibly uh, Destro as a spoiler. And all you need to do is just dress it up with a couple of stickers. And this thing looks amazing. Okay, so here we're gonna do a quick assembly video. Now, a couple of these pieces still need to be glued. I'm not gonna do that in this video. I can just show you the final product, what it looks like, just cause I'm not gonna sit here and uh, wait for something to dry. <laughs> Okay. I keep on forgetting I need to keep things in frame on the, the camera over here. <laughs> Come on, get in there. Okay, dude, come on, let's go. Ow! Yep, I hurt. Okay. And as you can probably already tell, I'm assembling this a lot faster than the last prototype version just because I think I finally got this thing all nailed down. Oh, kind of forgot something here. Yeah, got it. When you get too far ahead of yourself. I'm gonna go in there. Just like that. And obviously I got the uh, missile issue fixed. So they all go in like they're supposed to. Solid. Now, in under normal circumstances, you're going to want to glue all these uh, pieces together um, just to make sure that they don't ultimately end up flopping around on you. But this is just to show you how everything goes together.
like that. And then the gun just mounts right on to this. And these will end up ultimately being glued into place. Um, or they may stay. We'll give it a quick. No, nope, that one stays. And that one, of course, is not. So I'll just set that one aside. And the uh, rear tail fins. It's like that. And of course, the engine will also be glued into place. And it took me a bit to get this uh, stand situation nailed down. I had, had to print like these things up almost uh, four or five times, but I finally came up with a good solid uh, clamping solution. So it shouldn't be uh, moving around anywhere at all. There you go. Now there is a couple of... Uh, A couple of um, um, face coverings uh, to kind of show the seam line uh, for the front portion up here that just need to be glued on after uh, the full assembly is done. And you can more appropriately see that with my white version here. These two pieces right here. Just because I don't, me in particular, I don't like to see seam lines either. So, um, I, I like to best hide them. So the black despoiler will be going on my Etsy store here soon. I'm just uh, waiting on uh, Iron Grenadier stickers. Um, I sourced uh, uh, Sean Cho out to uh, where I think his name is Mr. Mr. X Zero. On Instagram, Facebook, uh, he does a great job with stickers, and uh, he did the ones for my um, my Swamp Fire. So he did a great, did some awesome design work with the Swamp Fire. Now for this one here, uh, the stickers that I have. Uh, actually, I'll use it as a thumbnail picture for this particular one. Uh, I think I believe his name goes by Justice Fighters. Uh, the sticker set is for the uh, Flight Pod, and they work perfectly with this. So um, I would highly recommend going through him and getting those stickers. Actually, I have. Yes, yeah, Justice Fighters. I have a package right here because I was going to do a second second one for me because I like the white one so much. So this is a sticker set that I used for the uh, uh, Cobra version of the uh, the white version of the despoiler. And again, I believe this is the flight pod one, so you can kind of get an idea about. I pretty, I pretty much use all of these on on it, so it looked it just looked fantastic the way it came out. Again, that's on Etsy and uh, it's it's under uh, Justice Fighters, so check them out if you can. Okay, uh, that is it as far as the despoiler goes. I got everything ironed out, nailed down, uh, ready to produce. I've got many parts ready. Again, I'm just waiting on stickers to show up, so I can just start putting this up on my store, so people can start buying it. Uh, I'm going to detach my phone here real quick. And for those uh, people that are eyeballing what is on my workstation here, you will obviously saw that I am also working on a buzz board. And it's definitely a lot bigger than the, uh, <laughs> than the little three, three quarter one. It's a, lot, it's a lot heavier too. So I just got this in like a couple days ago. 
uh, long um, after I'd already done the design work and the printing for this. So I never had this as a kid. Again, I was just going by off of what was uh, uh, showing up on 3D Joe's. This is the prototype. I plan on putting in a lot more uh, detail work. Uh, kind of like you know how you see these little bitty pieces here. Uh, plenty of room. You don't have to roll the dude over in order to get in there. So this is this would technically be a lot bigger scale-wise than this one because as most may know that actually own this, you really actually have a hard time getting the three and three quarter figure into that buzz board. And I found out recently how actually how bad it is. So it's pretty cramped in there. But my version has a monitor, so they actually, you know, you can actually see what's ahead of you. Uh, and these do spin. I just gotta relax the tolerance a little bit on these and find a way to uh, glue these together. Ultimately in the end, that way they all spin together. Uh, but I mean, let's be real, who, who actually is going to be owning, owning this that is going to be rolling this on the floor? Uh, this is PLA, so it's not you're not going to have any traction with it. Uh, and that and I really wanted to make sure that uh, tolerance-wise that the blades never touch the ground just because I don't want to break any of these uh, for what people are paying for them. Um, again, there's just a few things I need to fix on here. Uh, the door... I went through a couple iterations of the, the door to make sure that it prints right. Uh, this will be mounted up flush with uh, the final version. Uh, and yes, of course, it still has the gun and it does rotate. And I wanted to add my own detailing of uh, some, some sort of rear engine uh, capability on this thing. And I do have an emblem uh, designed up to be able to print it out to go in there. I just haven't done it yet. Uh, it will be on my final version. This is a neat little piece, uh, kind of a pain to uh, print up just for the fact that uh, all that up on the top. So I'm going to try and find a way to hide that from view so you don't see any of the spots where the supports were. Uh, that was the main thing. And I actually have to push this seat back because it is a little tough for this guy to fit in there. Uh, so the final version is going to be about a quarter of an inch maybe 5 sixteenths of an inch uh, further back. That chair is going to almost be touching that uh, back beam, so I wanted to make sure that they had more room to fit in there. And he's not the biggest figure, so you want to make sure that a back can fit in there as well. Or maybe Destro, because I think Destro is taller than him too. But anyways, well, there was a lot covered in this video. Uh, again, this will be going up on my Etsy here in a week or two. Once I get the stickers in, this is already up on my Etsy. Uh, stickers can be purchased through Justice Fighters on Etsy. Uh, and that'll be going up as soon as I get through with the detail work. A uh, lot happening. Oh, and stand. Of course, the Cobra stand. I am going to be uh, selling a shorter version of the Cobra stand. Serpentor stand. Cobra stand? Serpentor stand. So that way for those that I uh, would like to have a little more shelf space. Let me see if I can get that on here with one hand. Yep, there we go. So there's that. And I am going to be offering a short stand and a tall stand for the uh, despoiler as well. So. Alright, that's it. Fix this designs. Signing out.